Blue chip is a term reserved for the best of the best. Whether the topic is real estate, stocks, or in this case, collector car automobiles, everyone desires a blue chip. If you'd like to see firsthand qualities of a blue chip collector car, then you won't want to miss this episode of the Speed Journal. We're at Bonham's Quail Lodge Auction in beautiful Carmel, California. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Michael Caimano. Michael, how are you? Great, how are you? All right, great, nice yeah, to see you. Thanks for coming by. You're with Bonham's Auction, yes, and you're going to present a beautiful McLaren F1 to us. I am, I am uh, graced with the, uh, the opportunity to do so. Yes. Uh, it's a 1995 McLaren F1. Uh, it's being presented by the original owner. Uh, he flew over to the UK and took factory delivery of the car, mm. uh, at which point he went on a tour of Europe, uh, which is, accounts for almost half of the mileage that's on the car today. Interesting. Yeah, uh, he describes it as the uh, trip of a lifetime, as you can imagine. Today, the car has just over 9,000 miles on it. Uh, again, half of those were, were within the first uh, few weeks there. And since then, it's been uh, kept on the East Coast and religiously maintained uh, at McLaren. We have all of the service history for the car. Now, you had an opportunity to actually drive this car at Lime Rock? We did. So part of the promotion of the car, we took it down to Lime Rock and created a video um, just because something so special and, and unique such as this car, uh, most people don't get to see it in action. You just see static photos of it uh, right. most of the time in a studio somewhere. Right. So we thought it would be a great opportunity to uh, you know, let the car do what it's supposed to and, and bring it out to the track and get some good audio and, and visual um, experience with it. So uh, when the car came out, it was the fastest naturally aspirated car to ever uh, you know, be produced. It would do 240 miles an hour. And what's interesting is even today, all these years later, it still holds the record as the fastest naturally aspirated car. Um, nothing has, has surpassed it. And uh, you know, from, from the makes of uh, new cars today with all the turbocharging technology, doesn't seem like any car will go in that direction again. So probably a title that, that this will hold on to. Everything is about weight, aerodynamics, and, and power. Um, it is the it holds true to the ultimate driving machine. Are there any rumors as far as value or what a car like this might sell for? So, um, you know, it, it's very difficult to put a value on a car um, such as this. Uh, a, a McLaren F1 with this pedigree and history has never publicly been offered before. Uh, so it's difficult to say, but we certainly hope and expect it to exceed the, uh, the previous record of, of, of 13,750 for sure. I'm sure you'll be on pins and needles when that's on the block. It will be very exciting. Um, you know, it's not often that uh, we get to offer or that the market has the opportunity to purchase a car mm -hmm. with this kind of history and provenance and collectability. Um, it's, it's what a lot of people consider a, a blue chip car. Uh, it kind of checks off all the right boxes. Michael, share with us yes. what you know about the Enzo. Sure, so the Enzo is a, a spectacular car. It's part of the supercar lineage from Ferrari, uh, beginning with the 288 GTO, followed by the F40, the F50, then we come to the Enzo, uh, followed by the LaFerrari. Right. Uh, the Enzo, they only made 499 examples, uh, production cars, and they did produce a 500th that was presented to the Pope, um, so quite, quite a special car as well. Um, but th this car is very unique in that it is one of the few that was made in black. There's believed uh, 12 black examples worldwide. Uh, only it's either four or six of them are believed to be U.S. cars in, in the United States. And if you look at the car, it's got the stunning combination of the black exterior with the Koyo interior. There's only, yeah, there's only two in the world that way, uh, this, this being one of them. Uh, and if you notice the, the condition of the car, it is uh, one of the most pristine Enzos you'll, you'll ever see. So there might be examples that have lower mileage, but none that have been maintained to this level and this standard. Uh, it's always serviced at Ferrari uh, for all of its major and, and minor um, you know, things that are, that are done to it. It's always brought to Ferrari. And the owner uh, went so far as to, when he first purchased it, he wrapped, I'd say, 90% of the car in clear bra to protect that factory original paint under there. And uh, this is another car that can easily be considered a blue chip collectible just because you know, it's limited production uh, and it's a Ferrari supercar. Um, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. So, And what kind of price range do we expect on this one, Michael? Uh, this should fall somewhere between two and two and a half million dollars. Uh, yeah, that's, that's typically what, what the current market seems to be on them. 
This could even do a bit more just because it's in such fantastic condition. Uh, I had the pleasure of, of driving this yesterday for a few miles here and uh, 651 horsepower from naturally aspirated Ferrari V12 uh, is quite the, uh, quite the experience. So, yes, absolutely. Lucky you. Yes, good Great. times. Michael, thanks so much. No worries, thank Appreciate you. Your time. I'd like to introduce you to Rupert Banner. Rupert, how are you? Very well, nice to see you. Thank you, you too. Rupert's with Bonhams Auction, and he's going to describe to us this beautiful Maserati 300S. I certainly will. So what we have here is a 1956 Maserati 300S. It's uh, contemporaneous with the Grand Prix cars, which Maserati were, were so well known for and um, were winning the uh, World Championship in, the, in those days. Uh, this is a sports racing car from the same stable. Maserati in those days was, was all about racing. And this is one of the definitive cars of its era. Um, you've got the, the six cylinder motor. They were just well, well known for, for the uh, ability to campaign all of the sports car races. They did everything in the days as well. They did circuit racing, they did uh, the long distance shows, the Mille Miglia, et cetera. And so for that reason, you've got a car that, because it was great in its day, it means you can do an awful lot with it today. Tell us about its history, the important drivers it's had. Well, it's, um, I mean, I think if you, if you think of Maserati and if you think of uh, drivers in that era, I mean, this is, a, this is a fabulous combination. This is actually a Fangio car. Manuel Fangio, who was just to many the greatest. You know, when you when you hear other other drivers who were contemporaries of him, who you think were luminaries, say, like Sir Sterling Moss, to say that Fangio was the best, I think that that puts it into you know its own context. It, it says that it's it, it's probably true that he was the greatest. Uh, he was the driver of this car at the Portuguese Grand Prix, mm -hmm. and he won it. Uh -huh. It then went out to South America, and uh, over two two heats of the weekend for the Portu for these. Uh, Brazilian Grand Prix at Sao Paulo and also at Rio de Janeiro. Uh, he was also a winner there. And the car then stayed down there in South America and was at most, had half of its life then, basically, uh, until the 1970s when it was uh, brought back to Europe and it went to the UK. Uh, it had another chapter of its life. It was restored and raced uh, very efficiently over there. It was bought by the American who currently owns it over there. And he also used it over there for some time. He's had it since 1999, so uh, it's just, it's had a long racing career all the way. Talk about its eligibility. Is there anything that this car can't do? Well, I mean, I, I had the great pleasure of just hopping in this car this morning and driving it uh, just on the Carmel Valley Road. If you only could do that, I think it would be enough. But the most amazing thing is that because it did everything in the day, you know, it was circuit raced, it means you can go to Monaco, it means in, those, in that particular window, a lot of the, uh, the, the World Championship was actually sports car racing, don't forget. So that means that you, you, know, you can take it to, to various events for circuit racing, but you also do the, the major tours, of, uh, which are all associated effectively with a Mille I mean, uh, they're all retrospectives. Wherever they're held in the world, they're all thousand mile tours, and that, that means that you've got eligibility to, to use it there as well. And there's a good chance once you arrive with this car, may not be another one just like it. No, you're, um, you're in uh, a rara Elvis for sure. You know, uh, but they, they had great histories, they were very popular in America as well. You know, Cunningham, Bill Spear, all these guys, they, they raced them very successfully over here. Tony Paravano. Um, they, were, they were very popular cars in America. It wasn't just a European thing. So you can emulate all of your heroes and, uh, and you've got a wonderful car. Between six million and seven million is, uh, is our, the price bracket swing on it. Um, in truth, if you take any serious sports car racing, uh, sports, sports car from that racing era, you're looking at numbers in that in that territory and upwards. Obviously, if you you know if you're talking about Le Mans winning Ferraris and stuff, you're you're adding multiples to that. But it's it's really it represents, I think, pretty good value for, for what you can do, um, and for its importance and for the name association as well. It checks off many boxes, doesn't it? It certainly does. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Rupert, we thank you so much for your time. Great description of this car. Wish you the best of luck when this goes over the block. We're looking forward to it. Thank all you right. so much. Thank you, Rupert. I expect there will be more than a few new delighted owners 
as these collectibles change hands this weekend. We like to thank Bonhams and their team of specialists for showcasing these fascinating cars. And we'd like to thank you for joining the Speed Journal.